Welcome to Week in Geek, your new comics preview for May 7th. I'm Mike Ortiz. And I'm Chris Brown. What do you got? I'm going to start off here with uh, Swamp Thing, number 31. This is uh, Charles Soule. This has been some really, really cool stuff. I'm really enjoying what they're doing with, uh, with Swamp Thing. This is uh, the, the third part of the story where basically the, uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember the name of the group, but there's supposed to be the protectors of Swamp Thing. They've actually found a way to kind of steal, you know, the Swamp Thing body. They've, they've knocked him unconscious oh, and wow. making him deal with some things. And in the meantime, while he's supposed to be being protected, you've got a couple of people who are from the green that have wandered out into town. They're human now, so they're like, we don't know what's going on. We haven't been alive for hundreds of years. What's up? We're going to go off into New Orleans. Why not? Why shouldn't we? Um, it, it's been a really cool story. I really like, uh, oh, it looks like starting uh, the next arc. He's really good at that as well. You know, you're weaving. You're, I, I don't necessarily feel like it's a series of arcs. At this point, he's just telling there's a bigger tale. There's other things weaving in and out, much like the old comics. You'll get the introduction of what's going to happen next at the yeah. end. And he's just, he's writing a really cool Swamp Thing book. Uh, I, I really like what he's doing. And if you're not reading it, you should be. It's a book I'm caught up on. Imagine wow. that. So uh, that's got to say something. <laughs> uh, next, we've got Black Widow. This is uh, written by Nathan Edmondson. This is Black Widow issue number six. This is another one I've really been enjoying. This is uh, Black Widow. The, the things she does sort of in penance for uh, the bad things that she does. Um, uh, and, and also uh, when she's not working with the Avengers. So she, yeah. she takes a check. She gets some money. But she, you know, puts that money elsewhere, tries to do good good with it. And. You know, I'm really distracted by this Dr. Pepper ad with Rocket Raccoon over at number one. Like, Rocket Raccoon is a fraction. Has it gotten that bad, really? I don't know. Um, but I, I think Black Widow's been a good book. Uh, I really enjoy what Nathan Edmondson's done, kind of the approach to, to the character. So, cool stuff. Ooh. Hey, look, we've got another Charles Soul book. Surprise. <sighs> this is She-Hulk number four. I've really enjoyed uh, this book so far. I, you know, I hear some people saying that what distracts them from the book is the artwork. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It doesn't distract me at all. I, I like it. I don't mind that it's a little cartoony. She-Hulk has always rolled the fine line of being sort of cartoony and super, super heroic at the same time. This is, I believe we're still dealing with the uh, the story of Latveria. Um, what was it? Kristoff had come to her looking for help. Right. And just kind of a, a fun book. It's got like a... Almost like a Daredevil, uh, somewhere in between, like, uh, the, the fun stuff that they've done with Daredevil and then the Hawkeye book. Okay. Yeah. You know, that, that's sort of what it feels like for me. But you've got an actual lawyer writing about a lawyer. So that's uh, cool and helpful yeah. and fun. And a guy who gets comics. Like, he gets it. I, just right. the way he writes, he writes good comic books. Next up, I've got Cyclops number one. This is by Greg Rucka. Now, it's my understanding this is supposed to be uh, young Cyclops off on adventures with his dad in space, right? Yeah. I'm at least going to read the first issue. <laughs> yeah, and why wouldn't I? Uh, you know, it's uh, him running around with the Star Jammers, yeah. young, Cy young Cyclops. They've messed up this whole time stream thing so bad. They don't even care. They're just telling stories. And that's all I care about at this point. I don't care about continuity. You can't do continuity. You can't not age people over 50 years and then go, no, no, that thing happened like 10 years ago. Yeah, but what about everything that happened 20 years ago? I read it. I was there. I uh, I, I like this. I'm curious uh, to see what they're going to do, and I think it's going to be kind of fun. And, you know, I like Greg Rucka's uh, writing some of the time. So I'm, I'm willing to give him a shot here and, and see what I think. Next up, I've got Iron Fist, The Living Weapon. This is issue number two. I'm an Iron Fist slappy. I like Iron Fist. I'm going to follow whatever they're doing with Iron Fist. And admittedly, that first issue, I felt like he took a lot of time sort of rehashing the origin. You know, we got to get them all up on the mountaintop. We got to get them looking for Kunlun. You got to get, you know, the wolves are coming, uh, the double cross. And uh, I've read all that. And I, I get it. Like, not everybody has. Every time they do a new Iron Fist, they got to rehash yeah. that origin. And that's fine. Um, I guess we're still doing some of that rehashing. So maybe, maybe I'm so rehashed that I've rehashed <laughs> stuff that has yet to be hashed. Uh, but I... I kind of like it. I'm curious. I like Iron Fist, so I'm going to ride this out and see where it's going. Uh, you know, it's what, uh, who is it, Carrie, uh, Carrie Andrews, yeah. he did with that Spider-Man Rain. Yep. So, and I liked that, so hopefully he does a decent job with, with Iron Fist here. Now, the first, like I said, the first issue, issue was okay, just I, get to the point. It's, I let Iron Fist do some, some awesome stuff. That last series was so incredible, kind of creating the legacy character. And, yeah. And doing that thing with it, it's like, ah, you better really knock it out of the park. You're just, you're back 
back on the mountain looking for Kulun, right. though. All right. <laughs> so uh, next I've got Loki, Agent of Asgard. This is issue number four. I, I like this book so far. It's uh, young Loki. It's it's young, sexy, teen beat Loki <laughs> doing stuff for uh, for Asgard. And I know it's it's not aimed at me, but I'm having fun with it so far. And it, it it's, a, it's an all right book. It's, uh, I don't know, is that a little Mephisto? Is he racing people's marriages? What's he doing there? Nice. Uh, who knows? But uh, I, I like it so far. I think it's been kind of a cool book. They've, they've done some things with adding some, some characters to his little pantheon, people that he's meeting along the way, and it's been some kind of cool stuff, and I, I dig it. Cool. Here's a change of pace. We got a, uh, this is Black Dynamite, issue number two. This is the IDW run here. This is written by Brian Ash and Yasser Lester. Uh, you know, admittedly, I, I didn't get a chance to read the first issue of, the, of this one yet. I loved the thing that Ape Entertainment yeah. had done. I thought that was fantastic. You know, I saw a few uh, episodes of the Black Dynamite cartoon and thought they were pretty funny. I love the movie. I, I think the, the Black Dynamite character is just dynamite. Like, it really, the whole thing just cracks me up, and I love it. And uh, so that, that's why this is still in my stack, having not read the first yeah. issue yet. I will get to them. I'll probably power read the, the two and it's not like, you know, I haven't had enough time to read the two. The first issue came yeah. out months ago. It's not like this thing's on time. <laughs> if you if you read it, you still wouldn't know. That, that's, that's fair. That's a fair point. Next up, this is a book that I, I'm really liking quite a bit. This is The Wake, uh, issue number eight by uh, Scott Snyder and, and Sean Murphy. This uh, sea monsters and, you know, sort of a, a future where sea monsters have taken over. You had the first half of the story. You know, the first story arc was... You know what what's going on with building up to the monsters taking over the earth it's uh you know a woman and and she's got to just go on this deep sea mission real quick and all hell breaks loose and then you cut to now it's the future and like oh well wait what happened to those other people well wait maybe they're sending a transmission still from deep in the sea and there's all kinds of stuff going on like i'm it, it's a really cool like sea monster kind of story that's taken both a present approach and a what's going to happen approach and i, I dig it it's, it's cool scott snyder is a very capable writer who writes i think some great horror stuff you know he writes great batman stuff but his horror stuff is just yeah. fantastic so uh next up uh this is is this my only image book in the in the stack this wow. week I, there's lots of other great image stuff coming out you know revival and you know fatal i'm just behind I'm behind on these things, so, you know, to, to uh, again, to Fred Talak's point, we really only talk about some things. There's other great books coming out. Those are two of them this week yeah. that I'm just behind on. So, but I'm willing to, you know, try this number one that we got here. This is Nailbiter number one. Uh, this is Joshua Williamson. He's uh, He seems to be writing all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I mean, I guess just throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what happens. He uh, had done that Xenoholics, which I really liked, yeah. with uh, Seth DeMoos. Um, uh, his stuff, I think, is, is fantastic. And then uh, Ghosted, which I really liked. Yeah. And then he did something else recently that I thought I tried. And is, isn't he doing The Field? I don't know. Is that him? That might be him. No, that's the guy who's doing Sheltered, I think. But, you know, I'm willing to give it a shot. I don't really know what it's about, but it looks gross. It looks like a horror book. You know, within the first couple of pages, you got a guy, a uh, bunch of dead bodies, and he's biting people's fingers off. Like, uh, okay, all right. Let's see where that's going. Uh, it looks like maybe there's a, it's about maybe a serial killer. Maybe there's a guy that kind of looks like uh, the scarecrow with his head on fire. I don't know what's going on. Ah, I'm willing to give it a shot. Then we've got issue five of six. This is Boom reprinting that Dark Horse series from several years ago, Revelations, by Paul Jenkins and Humberto Ramos. As I said before, I never really finished the uh, the first go go round. I didn't even remember it ever finishing. I just remember that ash can that I got at Wizard World. This is uh, Murder Mystery at the Vatican. It's cool stuff. It, it's got a really neat kind of painted style with just uh, straight pencils, you know, no inks. Beautiful, beautiful artwork. I really like Humberto Ramos. I think he does some cool stuff, especially with this this style here. And uh, it looks really, really cool. Lots of rain in this book. It seems like it's always raining. Mm. And, uh, you know, I kind of like his, his uh, approach to rain. It looks, it looks kind of neat. And I better like it because it's raining all the damn time in this book. So uh, it's a cool book. Check that one out, too. I think Boom's doing some really cool stuff yeah. right now. I mean, granted, this is a reprint, but I'm, uh, Boom's got my attention. Nice. What do you, what do you got? Well, I'm going to start off with Green Lantern number 31. This is the first part of Uprising. This is a, a new crossover in the Green Lantern universe. 
Uh, basically, this is kind of the, the story that's been building for a while in Green Lantern and Green Lantern Corps with the Kuns and the Durlins and people okay. trying to turn against the Green Lantern Corps. Uh, this is really where it's been heading. So uh, basically, we're kind of in the meat of that storyline. Uh, the big attack on the Green Lantern Corps, the the Kuns are going to try to bring them down. So we're finally, all the stuff that's been sort of like subterfuge running okay. through the other books for the last couple of months is uh, finally coming to a head and we're getting the the common Green Lantern crossover. I don't know if this is crossing over into all of the books because certainly uh, New Guardians hasn't been following this storyline and neither is Red Lanterns. So I don't know if they're going to pick up on it uh, as part of Uprising or not. But uh, you know, Robert Vendetti it's a great cover. A great, a great job on this book. Uh, really been enjoying it a lot lately. Cool. Next up is uh, the new 52 Futures and number one. This is a new weekly book. Yep. Uh, the Zero Issue came out for Free Comic Book Day. Indeed. Did and, you read uh, that Zero Issue? I did read it. Uh, what did you think? Uh, you know, it had Batman Beyond in it, so All right, that alone right. sold it. All right. Uh, I mean, it, they don't give you a lot. In, in 20 years in the future or 25 years in the future, something like that, everything has gone to hell. All the heroes are now Omax, except for Batman and a few others. Okay. Uh, Batman Beyond, uh, the the character of Batman Beyond, obviously this is the the continuity version of it. It's a little bit different than the regular comic. It's sent back in time to today to uh, to prevent this from happening. Okay. However, there's a screw-up, and instead of coming back to today's time, he comes back five years from now. So this book is set five years into the future of the DC Universe, where they're trying to avert the future of 20 year, 25 years of the DC Universe. So I guess they watched all the time travel going on in Marvel Comics and said, we can screw that up too. Uh, so yeah, basically some... Break uh, your time stream, uh, we'll horrible, show you. A horrible, horrible future is happening in the far future, so in the near future they're trying to change it. And uh, trying to incorporate maybe those uh, Wildstorm characters that they didn't really know what yep, to do yeah, with. Yeah, we've got Grifter in here, uh, we've got uh, yeah a bunch of Wildstorm characters... Uh, how this plays out, not exactly sure. I mean, it, and and obviously, as something set five years in the future, this isn't like the future that's going to happen. That's five years of the future is always tends to be five years from whatever now is. So in ten years, this will be set five years from now, from then. Uh, but it's it's always just kind of neat to see you know where things are. A lot of companies have done that sort of jump ahead. But for me, I, I really my favorite part is just seeing Batman Beyond. The, the scenes okay. with with uh, Bruce Wayne and, and uh, Terry McGinnis in that Zero issue. As I'm reading it, I could hear the voices from the cartoon. So hopefully they'll capture some of that, even though the story and the future are completely different. Uh, but I've, I've always got a kick out of it. It looks like we got a nice new redesign on Firestorm uh, as well. So we're going to be seeing where uh, some yeah, of our heroes cool. are in the future. Uh, next up, another weekly book. Uh, this is Batman Eternal number five. Uh, I have not read the last issue yet uh, because weekly books are a bitch that way. They can be. Uh, so that that's the danger. You get three issues behind and on, and you're just screwed. But uh, this is continuing the. This also is set in the future, though I don't know if I think maybe a year in the future or an undetermined time in the future. So they they don't have to worry about the continuity of the Batman books at the moment. It's a nice way to do that. And create something that's on its own. And then own. when you get to where it should be and it doesn't match up, well, you don't care because yeah. that happened last year. Right. And again, this is set a year from whatever, wherever you are today, okay. this is a year from okay. there. Okay. That's fair. At least I think that's how they, they're doing it. But again, this is the weekly Batman book. Uh, Scott Snyder and James Tinian are the uh, the kind of showrunners. Uh, this particular one, uh, the script was written by uh, James Tinian. Uh, oh, actually, it's like, like all of them they have contributed. J uh, Ray Fox, John Lehman, and Tim Seeley, all contributing writers. Uh, we've got Andy Clark on the artwork. Really nice artwork, too, on this one. Uh, I've been enjoying it. It's the story of, of uh, Jim Gordon's in jail for uh, causing quite a catastrophe in, in Gotham and several hundred lives. Uh, God, Gordon thinks that he's that it was his fault, that he screwed okay. up, he made a mistake, and now he's got to pay the price. Of course, Gordon's friends all know that that's not what really happened, that somehow Gordon was set up and uh, Batman and the rest of the Bat family are, are going to try and figure out uh, exactly how. Batgirl's not too happy about it either because it's her dad that's going to be in jail. Uh, next up, Original Sin number one of eight, uh, Jason Aaron. This was almost my top pick. This, okay. uh, Mar Marvel's been doing a really good job with uh, the, the event books. I really liked Infinity a lot. 
and human and humanity never wasn't really an event book. I mean, there's only like two right. issues, and it one of them really wasn't even really. But this never is, happened. This is more of a traditional event, eight issues, and then obviously it's going to filter into all the other books. Uh, somebody, the, the zero issue was quite good. Uh, was it? I didn't get a chance to read it. It was quite good. It doesn't really tie into the story a lot, other than it's giving you some. It, it retells the origin of the Watcher, so people who may not know, because they haven't told his origin that many times. True. Um, so it tells the origin of the Watcher. It sets up his relationship with Nova, which I guess was something that, I, from when I was reading Nova, it was part of it. Right. And, uh, and then I guess it's still continuing. They have kind of this strange friendship going on. But basically, uh, someone uh, has killed the Watcher and uh, stolen his eyes. I don't know if that's a metaphor or if it's real. Uh, and, they were and, giving away bouncy ball yeah, eyeballs. So. And, and with it, the secrets of the Marvel Universe that only he has seen. So basically, that's the original sin. All of the sins of the past that people have committed. I guess okay. they're going to find out that uh, Tony Stark or his father was involved with the Gamma Bomb. And all of these things, basically, it's going to give us some untold uh, stuff from, from Marvel history, which is always kind of neat. Sure. And then a few of them will stick. Most of them will be forgotten in five years, and uh, and we'll move on. But we've got really well, nice art by Mike Diodato. You know, the, the Watcher was always uh, the at the beginning of the What If books. Yeah. What if this person steals the eyes and he's seeing things from another dimension and a what if and he's not seeing the things that actually happen? That's that's interesting because in the, the last issue, there was a scene with the Watcher looking at all the multiverses and you see stuff from other uh, from other universes that the Watcher is seeing. So yeah, maybe maybe that will be part of it too. Maybe that'll they're, be the They're album. bringing in a Spider-Man 2099 book. I'm sure that's yeah. going to have something to do. I, and... I guess in the original artwork, for the spread where they showed all the different dimensions, there was a shot of Miracle Man, and uh, at the last minute they just changed. They like okay. took, he took his shirt off, so now it's a blonde dude with no shirt standing there. But uh, but yeah, and anyways, yeah, that would be kind of an interesting take is that we find out all of these secrets and then find out that none of them are real. That'd be a nice twist. It might make, yeah. make some people mad, but it'd actually be kind of fun if, if they had us. It's an out for anything you don't I, actually I, want I to do. I kind of wish you hadn't mentioned it because if that had hit me with with nothing. With no uh, no no expectation, I would have been blown away. Now I'm going to think it's a cheap killing. So, <laughs> Sorry, that's, Jason what, that's what I'm here to do. Going, Damn you, Chris Brown! I'm, I'm here to ruin all your fun. <laughs> uh, next up, I've got uh, Real Heroes number two. Uh, this is by Brian Hitch. Uh, I don't know what this book's about. I picked up the first issue, haven't mm -hmm. read it yet, uh, but I like Brian Hitch's artwork a lot. It looks very similar to what he did with. Uh, I can't remember the name of the writer now. Uh, that book that came out from Image a while back. Where a bunch oh, of America's people... Got Powers. Yeah, yeah. Jonathan something was the writer of that. But uh, now Brian Hitch is uh, taking a shot at writing. I've never read anything he's written before. I don't know if he's a good writer. You know, we might be getting John Byrne or Frank Miller, or we might not. Uh, we'll so find out. In any event, the artwork's really nice. And uh, the very Brian Hitch-looking costumes that... Now all the Avengers look like because he designed the Avengers movie costumes, or at least some of them. Uh, so yeah, even though I haven't read the first issue, uh, Brian Hitch's reputation alone uh, is enough for me to at least give it a shot and hopefully read two of them before the third one comes out because I don't want to commit to uh, like six issues and go, wow, this sucks. Uh, next up, we've got Moon Knight. Uh, yet another one where I read the first issue, loved it. Second issue, uh, it's actually close to the top of the stack. Okay, yeah, but, I haven't uh, got to it either. Quite but there I, yet. I love that first issue, though. First issue was fantastic. I love that take. This is a bizarre looking. That's the weird bird Moon guy. Knight. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Warren Ellis has taken this book in places that it's never gone before, and that's a lot of fun. And uh, Declan Shalvey's fantastic yeah. artwork. So it fits uh, the character very well. Yeah, I mean, so we we go from this, you know, three piece suit wearing. Moon Knight to a weird, freaky bird creature knight. It's like the armor. bird god thing, right? Yeah. The... yeah. Uh, weird stuff, but, uh, you know, if anyone's going to make something like that work, is Warren Ellis. Agreed. Next up, we've got Miracle Man number five in a bag. Yeah, why? I don't know. Apparently, there's something offensive in here. Oh, okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, and in the last issue, they, they changed uh, some a racial slur, and I know we've got a... Uh, a birth coming in an upcoming issue. Uh, but this is the beginning of the second book, uh, The Red King Syndrome. Uh, the, okay. Uh, issue four wrapped up uh, book one. This is the beginning of book two. Uh, I'm assuming it's still written by the original writer. Uh, I haven't opened it up yet. 
Well, that's the point to get through all the Neil Gaiman stuff, right? And then Neil Gaiman. They're gonna begins do all, all the all the Alan Moore stuff, finishing. all the Gaiman stuff, and then Neil Gaiman and uh, Mark Buckingham will finish their storyline, and then who knows? So let's see. We've got this open now. We've got uh, original writer Alan Davis and John Ridgway. And uh, is this? Yeah, I don't. It looks great. I don't know what what's offensive in here. I know there was some offensive stuff. There's a lot of. Yeah, I don't know why they bagged this. That's kind of strange. Unless maybe in the backup features there's some offensive stuff. I don't know. But in any, any event, it's uh, it's the... Yeah, I thought it was weird that it was for, bagged. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, we've also got a backup feature with Young Miracle Man and some more behind-the-scenes stuff. This has been a great series. You know, it's a, it's oh, a sure. classic. Uh, I've, I've read it multiple times. I have the original issues. I have the original trades. I'm buying the issues, and when they put it all out in one nice... Miracle Man on the bus, I'll buy that too. Uh, because this is one of the greats. This is yeah. one of the, the, the great superhero comics of all time. Finally, you know, in a yeah. format people can read without having to do it illegally or pay a lot of money. Uh, next up, also something that was nearly my top pick. Okay, uh, interesting. Spider -Man, Amazing Spider-Man Learning to Crawl. Uh, this is one, Amazing Spider-Man 1.1. Now, I believe this is uh, this takes place... Right after Peter is bitten. Okay. So actually, yeah, he's walking back. And when this starts, he's walking back from catching the burglar that killed Uncle Ben. So okay. this uh, takes place after Amazing Fantasy 15. Uh, it's Dan Slott, but it's also, uh, what's this guy's name? Is this Ramon Perez. Okay. Fantastic artist. He's uh, he's done a lot, of, a lot of stuff. I don't know if he's done any Marvel stuff before. Um, but uh, really great stuff. That's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, I always like they. You know, they did that book with Kurt Busiek some years back, The Untold right. Tales of Spider Man. So yeah, I mean, we we got Peter back. So not only do we get Peter back today, and we get Peter back on the big screen, we get Peter in the past as well with a nice Alex Ross cover. Because if you're gonna do something set in the past, Alex Ross has got to do the cover. So yeah, I'm curious about this. I don't know if I think uh, they're introducing a new character tied to Spider-Man's origin, but I don't think that's here. I think okay. that's going to be an original sin. But, uh, yeah, it's always nice to see sort of the early days of uh, yeah. Peter Parker. And that's my stack. All right, well, I guess that brings me to the top of my stack here. I've got a uh, – this might be the first time uh, anything from this publisher has made it to the, all the way yeah. to the top. i got Boom Studios. This is The Woods, number one. This is James Tenyon, uh, the fourth, and Michael Dialinus uh, doing the art. Um, art looks really, really cool. This I'm not even really entirely sure what, what this is about, but it looks like some spooky woods, some weird thing. I don't know what's going on, but that art looks really cool, and uh, I'm willing to give James Tenyon a, a shot. Uh, you know, I, I didn't read the talent, didn't didn't really love it, but this is him doing something different, and, you know, he's kind of one of uh, one of Scott Snyder's guys, and this looks like a, a weird adventure with some strange monsters and... I don't know, it's kind of right up my alley, so I want to give it a shot. This looks like uh, some other publishers are getting a piece of the action, where this would have typically been something that you feel yeah. like would have ended up at Image. Definitely. Um, Dark Horse and Boom are both becoming like little mini images. Yeah, well, Image has kind of perfected that model and made it possible for these other things to, yeah. to jump in. You know, and Oni Press has been doing it for years, yeah. and, you know, they're not they're getting but, half the but, love. But, but no, yeah, nobody ever noticed. You know, but uh, did you notice that uh, Letter 44 did get picked up oh, by yeah. Sci-Fi? Yeah. So Sci-Fi is developing that as a TV show, which is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a great book. Very, very much so. And then if that ends up being a huge series like Walking Dead, I'm like, you know, the guy who created that drew a terrible swamp thing on my wall. <laughs> Yeah, the woods number one by Boom. I'm uh, I'm excited about that. I think they're doing uh, so they're they're doing some cool stuff. Look out for Boom. Yeah, definitely. Uh, my top pick is uh, Miles Morales: The Ultimate Spider-Man number one. Uh, this is the fourth number one of Ultimate Spider-Man. I think that I've uh, I've bought so far. Um, I, I this wasn't going to be the, my top pick actually un, until yesterday. I actually read the uh, Ultimate Spider-Man 200 last okay. night. Okay. And, uh, and it kind of reminded me, you know, why I've, I've liked this book and stuck with this book for a long time now. I mean, I think, didn't okay. it come out in 1999? Something like that, yeah. So, yeah, for 15 years, and, and people, when it came out, everybody ragged on it. Nobody thought it would last. Right. Um, and, and here we are, 15 years, 200 issues later, and it's still going strong. Completely different book. Completely different sure. Spider-Man. And that's kind of one of the things that 
that sort of made me appreciate what they've done with the Ultimate Universe. I thought they were going to finally put it to to, to rest. Uh, they're not, and, and I get it. They're going to try and, and just keep doing it in different directions. Um, but this really is a, a place where you're going to get things happening that you're not going to expect. Sure. You know, they they thought when when the Ultimate Universe came around, everyone expected it to get merged into the regular Marvel Universe. That didn't happen. Every couple of years, there's a big event that people go, this is it, now it's over. Yep. That didn't happen. People have been expecting Peter Parker to come back. He's not coming back. They don't right. need to. Um, this is where they can do stuff that they couldn't get away with in other books. And when it works here, then they start kind of pulling sure. those things in. The Marvel Universe of today looks a lot more like the Ultimate Universe of 2000 than sure. the Marvel Universe of 2000. So this, this, that's why I picked this. This is really kind of just the whole line in general. And this book is kind of at the center of it, of, of Marvel really doing something kind of different. And even though the book is, you know, its best days are probably behind it, I think mostly because, you know, Bendis is writing so much stuff now. Sure. That's really his priority. But this is his labor of love. And, and and you can see it. I mean, that's 200 issues in a row that he's written. You know, that's got to be one of the longest runs by yeah. by any writer on any book. I mean, it broke the record for the longest uh, by any creative team. So uh, really just for that, for the history and legacy of Ultimate Spider-Man and, and what it's done, uh, that's why I'm making it my topic. Right, fair enough. And isn't that uh, image, isn't that like a poster image from The Amazing Spider-Man? Oh yeah, it does. Like look from the first much. movie, yep. like but he's holding the mask in the movie poster. Yep, yeah. So they're doing yeah. everything they can to tie into this movie in the weeks right around hey, it. They're Marvel, they're smart. They're Marvel, not dumb. Not, they they know Spider Man's, and that's why I was even noticing like, wow, there's there's a lot of Spider Man this week. It's like, oh well, yeah, that's because that movie just, the came, movie out, just came out, and out. they're doing what they can to go, hey, and, remember us? Which uh, I like the movie uh, a great deal. I haven't had a chance to see it's, it yet. Uh, but... it's, it's no Winter Soldier. Okay, but, uh, but it's it's. Uh, it's a good movie. I enjoyed it. Right. I enjoyed it a great deal. It's it it uh, it had it had the heart like the first one did. Okay. Yeah, there's plot holes and things like that. And Damon say he cried? Yeah, he did cry. I mean Damon's an old softy, but Well yeah. Yeah. I, I gotta admit, there was a scene in there with a little there's a little kid in the movie. There's a lot of it's very very kid friendly other than the horrible thing that everyone who knows anything about Spider Man knows is coming. Right. In the movie. Other than that, there's a lot of nice moments for kids, and one of okay. them actually did make me tear up. I all right, it, it, uh, it's, it's it's a sweet movie, and the emotions all there. And I saw I saw it in a theater full of kids because we saw a very early show. Awesome. And I just sat there going, I feel sorry for these kids because they. I, I know how the movie ends just because you know I. Read yeah, something horrible's about to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't get too attached, kids. That that was actually what I uh, after the, the first Amazing Spider-Man, I turned to Kelly and I was like. She says, man, that was great. And, you know, she was great as, as uh, you know, Gwen Stacy. And I just looked at her and said, throw that poor girl off a bridge. <laughs> what? I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. I like her, too. It's going to be terrible. Oh, yeah, it was. It, it's it's a little heartbreaking. Uh, spoilers for something that happened in 1972. Yeah, sorry. Uh, but, you know, uh, yeah. but, yeah, if you know the story, you know what happens. And, ouch, it's painful. Oh, yeah, I bet. Yeah. But uh, be sure to check that out. Be sure to check out this week's books. And that is your Week in Geek. Mm-hmm.